In this video, we're going to go through a CFA level one style question on the revaluation model. This is, in fact, the second question in a row which we are doing on this topic. In the previous video, I had the opportunity to tell you about the choice available to companies reporting under IFRS between the cost model and the revaluation model. We also explored what happens when an asset is initially revalued upwards and then subsequently suffers a drop in value. So please make sure to watch the previous recording as well. You'll find the link in the description below. Now, in this question, I will want to reverse that pattern and show you how we deal with a situation in which an asset's fair value initially drops and subsequently increases. So... If this is something you want to get right in the exam, keep watching and let's get solving. So this is the question that I want you to have a go at. Cerberus Manufacturing, a company reporting under IFRS, uses the revaluation model to account for its land and buildings. On the 1st of January 2020, the company acquired a plot of land for 3 million euro. If at the end of the two annual periods following the acquisition, the fair value of the plot is determined to be 31st of December 2020, 2.6 million, then 31st of December 2021, 3.3 million. Which of the following best describes the impact of the plot's fair value changes on the company's income statement for the year 2021? And we've got three possible answers a 0 0.4 million euro gain, no impact, or a 0 0.7 million euro gain. Okay, as this is a follow-on question, I'm not going to go through any of the theory or logic behind the revaluation model. If you're not sure about it, please go back and watch the previous video. Anyway, the plot of land was acquired for 3 million euro. And the company accounts for it under the revaluation model, meaning that the carrying amount of the plot will need to be updated to reflect changes in fair value. We are told that at the 31st of December 2020, its fair value drops to 2.6 million. So this is a decrease of 0 0.4 million. Now, how do we deal with this? Let me show you using my financial statements template. We already have the plot of land sitting under PPE within assets. And I've also got the equity segment set up over here with revaluation surplus or reserve. And I'm also going to write retained earnings down here as that may come in useful if we are going to do any entries which impact PNL and therefore get transferred to retain earnings as well. Now, by the end of 2020, the plot's carrying amount needs to be reduced by 0 0.4 million. So over here in this column, I'm going to have a reduction of 0 0.4 um, all the way down to a new level of 2.6 million. And the corresponding entry cannot go to revaluation surplus. Why is that? Well, as I said in the previous video, this line can only take on positive values. So it cannot drop below zero. When you have an initial fair value change which is negative, you need to take it as a loss to the income statement. So let me write minus 0 0.4 or um, emphasize that actually with a downward arrow over here and it naturally does not therefore go to other comprehensive income uh, because we're not impacting revaluation surplus. As you will know, Anything that goes to PL ultimately impacts retained earnings. So let me draw an arrow going this way towards equity and more specifically to retained earnings with a downward arrow of 0 0.4 uh, within equity. And we now have the same amount of downward movement within assets and the same uh, movement as the movement on the right hand side of the balance sheet within 
equity, 0.4 as well. Going back to the note, let's just state that this drop goes to P and L. Now, at the end of the next year, the assets fair value is estimated to be 3.3 million. So that's an increase. And to the extent that this increase reverses the previous drop, which was already taken to earnings, that's the drop of 0 0.4 million, um, this is dealt with via PNL. So let me draw an upward arrow with 0 0.4 million and write PNL next to it. And this is obviously a plus, so a gain going to PNL. Any further gain, so beyond this 0 0.4, will go to other comprehensive income and there, therefore will naturally increase the revaluation surplus as well. So this is 0 0.3 million, which goes to OCI. Back to the template. In the 2021 column, we have the increase 0 0.7 million. So taking us all the way up to a new level of 3.3 million. And that's going to be obviously, as we said just a moment ago, split into two entries, 0 0.4 million. So matching the previous year's loss, that's a gain taken to PNL. So let me write 0 0.4 here with an upward arrow. And um, this naturally also, like anything that was taken to PNL, impacts our retained earnings. So an arrow pointing over here upward 0 0.4 and on top of this the additional gain that was 0 0.3 million that's taken to revaluation surplus 0 0.3 million um, and as I told you in the previous video any gains or losses which bypass the income statement must be presented within other comprehensive income as well. So this 0 0.3 of additional gain wasn't taken to PLN, PNL because it wasn't reversing a previous loss. So it's not only displayed under revaluation surplus, but also over here in the 2021 column within OCI, 0 0.3 with an upward arrow or a plus. Let's go back to the question and quickly check what we were actually being asked for. Which of the following best describes the impact of the plot's fair value changes on the company's income statement for the year 2021? Well, it's naturally a 0 0.4 million euro gain reversing the previous year's loss. So this is in line with answer A.